accent that I hail from the land of the long white cloud. Long white cloud. Absolutely. Grew up in small town New Zealand. Yep. Not at all. I, I didn't have any idea that I'd be any good at this sort of thing. Um, you go to primary school, it's New Zealand, you play every sport that's going around, you play rugby, you play soccer, you play all sorts. And, um, and it wasn't until I really got to high school that uh, we, in, in New Zealand, you go to an all boys school or an all girls school, usually. And uh, they stream the classes and, and they give you a whole lot of tests and I managed to get in the class that seemed to be at the top. Uh, we were a very badly behaved class, I'm afraid. Microbiology and biochemistry and physiology and the like. And, and um, I did anthropology as well, it was quite interesting. And the two classes I really didn't like, the two lecturers that were the worst, were microbiology and biochemistry. So naturally, in year two, I took those two courses. <laughs> I, I thought microbiology was fascinating. Small organisms could take over enormous organisms and, and kill them and, and, and control them. And I thought that was fascinating. So that was great. I, I did that in the second year. And in that second year, I also won a, um, the Lions New Zealand Youth of the Year. So I got mm -hmm. sent to America for a, wow. two, three months. And um, I had someone take notes for me who was very good at taking notes. So I came back. And I passed with flying colours, I think, because the person who took the notes was such so good at taking notes. But anyway, uh, passed really well and, and eventually got through um, my um, bachelor's degree. And what you can then do is you can do an honours degree. Yeah. One year of research. And, oh, that was great. I mean, it was scary because you're going into the lab and you're doing something no one else in the world's going to yeah. do. And you don't know what the answer is. The beautiful thing is there's, there's no wrong answer. So that was quite an inspirational year for you. It was really fantastic. And so I worked on, in the in the fourth year of university, I worked in a lab that worked on viruses that attacked bacteria. And it was just pretty classic microbiology. But it was inspired. Moved to Toronto and um, the guy who we went to work for, we were working on um, how HIV got around the immune system. So this is a really important problem. You know, HIV attacks the immune system, but you know, how does it actually do this? And if we could f sort of unlock that code, could we now release the immune system? I suppose so. Um, we had this guy in Fraser meet us at the old Brisbane airport, which was a shed, I think, in those days. <laughs> yes. And uh, we started working at the Princess Alexandra Hospital. Mm. What we were to know at the time was that Ian had been working on a, a vaccine with his colleague Jan Zhu. And uh, while I had dibbled at the side, of the, in terms of experiments and I went on a few trips with Ian to, to the companies that were uh, interested in, in pushing the vaccine. Uh, most of the work had been done at that stage and what occurred in the end was, um, you know, the story goes that Gardasil was licensed to Merck and that became the, uh, the first cervical cancer vaccine mm -hmm. and uh, it was an incredibly interesting experience seeing something go from bench to to bedside. We're still working, so the vaccine is essentially going to stop people getting cancer bef because they haven't yet been infected with yeah. the virus. Now the, that's going to take a long, long time to come through. So we still have a whole pool of females and, and now males who are on the road to uh, cancer caused by this virus. Yeah. So we need a therapeutic product or a therapy for right. those already on that. Right. So we've been working on that now for uh, quite some time. Uh, we've got some really promising drugs that mm -hmm. we think will um, cure people of both uh, cervical cancer but uh, also head and neck cancer, or sort of, of which wow. about a third are caused by papillomavirus. And wow. so there are other sorts of cancers we can cure. Of course, eventually the vaccine will wipe those out, mm. uh, hopefully, as long as everyone gets vaccinated. Mm. So we've been interested in that. I've also been interested in um, some of the other causes of cancer, viral causes of cancer. So we've worked on Merkel cell, or working on Merkel cell carcinoma, mm -hmm. which is the deadliest skin cancer. It's mm -hmm. quite rare, but it's mm -hmm. more deadly than melanoma. Mm -hmm. It's caused by a virus. Really? So um, we're interested in how that works, and uh, I don't, you know, it's a great job. Come to work every day. Yeah. I don't know what my students are going to bring to me, but it's fantastic to see that when discoveries are made, how excited they are. But